Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the American Masterminds Podcast. Each episode, we invite extraordinary guests who are masters of their craft, they're innovators, entrepreneurs, and of course, motorcycle enthusiasts who have made their mark in the world. They share their stories, insights, and hard-earned wisdom, giving you a front row seat to the strategies and experiences that shape their successes. So sit back, grab a drink, and get ready for an exhilarating ride as we dive deep into the minds of these exceptional individuals. Along the way, we'll uncover powerful strategies, gain fresh perspectives, and explore the limitless possibilities of what it takes to be an American mastermind. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Well, there's some things I'd like to get off of my chest then. Okay, let's get it. Let's get it going. <laughs> um, what's the deal with? Oh, I got nothing. I got nothing. Really. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's start with let's start with Justin. Justin on camera now. Why don't you tell us about you, where you came from, what do you ride, what do you do? Uh, let's see, I came from, I live kind of live in Draper right now, uh, living in Conway Heights most of my life, and all over the country living for various sales endeavors. Um, but now I'm uh, riding a Harley Road Glide special. Um, it's black, I'm starting to get into taking it apart and doing things, just did stage two on it. Nice. So it's a 114. It's dead sexy. Ooh. Yeah, it's a beaut. And try to try to try to get stage three by when winter's done this year. Nice. Leave, leave it nice. there. Hell yeah. <laughs> right on. But yeah, it's been a good bike. Um, yeah. How long have you had it? One year. Oh, cool. One year. I had a. I've rode, jeez, dozen bikes before. No, no, no baggers. Back, this is the first bagger. Never going back. Yeah, you, that's a fact. Really? You're never going to go back? I don't think so. I mean, where am I going to put all my shit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true, right? <laughs> it's true. Like, once you have a bagger, like I have, I have, this, I have the uh, street bob at my house, but like, it's just like. It's not very comfortable. If I go somewhere, I'm like, <laughs> I got to have, I, I got shit. I yeah. Shit now. <laughs> yeah, you see, I brought in a 12-pack of uh, Diet Coke yeah. I had in the back of there. Yeah, you and can't do that on your, on your street bob. No. no. <laughs> you cannot. I have a soft tail slim, and I took it out on... Uh, yesterday, and why I cried a little bit, but it's going bye bye. Is it? Yeah. You've made your you've made up your mind. I've made up my mind. It's got to go. In exchange, what are you what are you getting? I have an in, that Indian Challenger out there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I almost went Indian. The chieftains are sick. I they, like, dude, oh, they're sick bikes. These things are wild. The the power that the handle it's the handling that gets me. Really? It's like a sport bike. <laughs> it's like a bagger sport bike. Hmm. It's awesome. I follow a couple of uh, dudes that race their baggers, like they're. They're like professional motocross guys, except for baggers. Yeah, they throw those bikes around. It's unbelievable what they're doing with those giant machines. So I guess we're missing it this year, but next year we'll have the King of the Baggers will be here again. There's a and race called the King of the Baggers? Yes. It's a whole event called the King of the Baggers. Uh, they do it out of the Speedway? I would assume so. Wow. I don't know where else they would State do it. Street. Wow. What is it. What does it entail? What? Uh, there's a race. There's and then they do all the other side competitions like the slowest and all that stuff. Yeah. The and slowest. The slowest is cool. That's, 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 the, that's the real riders right there. How yeah. slow can you go? Like that one guy that from the from the Punishers. Yeah. Good grief. Yeah. What's dude. Jordan PD? He just that didn't even move. Nuts. Yeah. Parked that thing. Yeah. With, those nope. cop riders. They got they got the little edge on that type of. Yeah. yeah, we have to ban them if we're going to do another competition. Yeah. It wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. He's just just like let's go. Yeah, and he, it was a new bike. He wasn't even friends with it yet. He, he said, would, he's like, I'm not that good on yeah. this bike. I just barely got it, so I probably won't do that well. He could literally stop for, like, five seconds at a time just, and I just, then just nudge just, forward a little bit, stop. And go, yeah. It's amazing. It's crazy. What was weird to me is his body didn't move. Yeah, he stayed rigid, right? He, yeah, but, like, everything he was doing, everybody else was trying to go back and forth and, like, go slow and speed up. and go. He just didn't. He just sat still. Up a little bit. Yeah. Up a little bit further. I love watching those obstacle courses that they do where they have the timed obstacle course where they're going through the cones. On a bagger. Oh. On a bagger with the oh, loopy loots. And they're putting those, they're putting the bags almost on the ground on these turns and they're doing the yeah. figure eights and stuff like that. Man, mad respect. I, you don't really get what that means. I've seen them do it before, but until you throw one around, you just don't even know what they're doing. No. Yeah, trying to maneuver that bagger around like that is not a... It's I would love easy. to do it where you could go and rent them with the bars and everything on them oh. so you can just like <laughs> you can drop it if you like yeah it, that's what they're for you can for. do that with a normal rental <laughs> no you can't yeah. can you scott no they'll come and get you <laughs> 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 they've got a um you know the gentleman that rode with us dan that rode with us a while back we did mirror lake he was on the um 
was it a Ducati? Like a big old, it was a big, like 1100, like the biggest. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think it was a Ducati, but something. Anyway, he used to tra- he used to teach that um, advanced rider. Was he course. the one that was going around the corners and like all but laying it Dropping sideways? Yeah. yeah. And you see this guy; he's just a big butterball guy, just like just like the rest of us. But he was throwing that bike around. He had his knee down. And he was wearing all leathers. I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I talked to him, and he used to train out at the speedway. And I think we could get him to give us a an afternoon if I asked nicely of like advanced. That would be awesome. Wouldn't that be cool? That would yeah, be, be so awesome. much fun. Would you be down to do something oh, like that? Hell yeah. Yeah. And I've asked him. He's like, yeah, absolutely. Just tell me when. So he's all about it. it any, just... any excuse to be near motorcycles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll sign up for it. I want to wait till it cools off. I did the safety course down in Linden just uh, two weeks ago, and I about melted away. It was I'm, bad. Yeah. I'm just not built like I used to be. If I stand out in the heat for more than like 10 minutes, I turn into a soggy mess. So Says, says the Jones. guy with the perfect tan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right i can take that kind of heat <laughs> but it, it just got hot standing out there in the on the in the parking lot and it's not like right away but you're out there for like six hours sitting on top of those motorcycles well you yeah really black to top to yeah it's... well and if they're talking about you know where's the where's the headlight switch yeah. you know where's the rear brakes yeah. oh my gosh we're smashing talking about the rear brakes still smashing your head into that's the what you worry when you get into some of those you're like is this beneficial or not <clears throat> actually um the first day was pretty brutal i'm not gonna lie i had to keep telling myself not to use the words i know this you know what i mean it's like the words that shook the right danger words and i learned i learned some stuff about my bike i didn't know i was actually pretty surprised i don't know if it was worth um three hundred dollars in in three days worth of that but I'm a better rider because of it, I feel like. But I'm ready for that advanced course, I think. When um, we got out there, they were riding uh, 500s, the little Rebels, and I had to sit back up on the passenger seat because it was just like, <laughs> I was like Donkey Kong on that bike. It was so small. Yeah, Rebels are, are tiny bikes. Tiny, yeah. The the, um, the foot pegs are like underneath you and kind of behind you a little bit where I'm used to having them up in front of me, you know, by a long ways on my Lazy Boy. So it was brutal. Yeah. But it was, fun. it was fun learning some stuff. Annie was um, she was way better than I thought she'd be. I thought she'd be dropping the bike all over the place. Two people out of the 12 washed out. So, so it wasn't Which is like... It wild. Good honor for you not. pay to pass that class, basically. You yeah. Know? So they, they're going to go back, and they have to get, like, one-on-one training. They'll get one-on-one oh, wow. to get through. So I think they're, the, they're not making any money on those two. But. I wonder if they have anybody that comes through that just goes, you shouldn't ever... Yeah. There right on motors be, there, there has, has to be, be. Oh, and yeah. who gets that to tell sense. them that i did you did i told both those people you guys maybe should sell your bikes <laughs> 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 one was this cute little like 21 year old from alaska she's down here to weld she's like a professional welder like like all these weird like super cute hardcore welder covered in tats didn't swear like had a like talked wow. like a church girl okay. like this weird it was it was weird, and then she was just dropping the bike like crazy. She dropped the bike like eight times before lunch. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh. You should buy a Jeep. <clears throat> yeah, or uh, the three-wheeled ones. You know what I mean? Those work too? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. would be fine, but you, this wasn't going to work. And then there was a dude um, who was from Peru, and he – I didn't tell him, but I, I kept, like, talking to him. Like, hey, you know, when you're turning, keep your eye where you want to go. Like, watch on where you're going. But he just couldn't get the throttle to cr- clutch – ratio figured out like he kept on popping the clutch and popping the clutch hmm. wasn't it but in peru isn't their main source of transportation bikes dude Free. that's all you saw all, right bikes billions of them like little motorcycles i've never seen the brand of like and they're all 150s or or smaller and they're just tearing it up there's no lights there's, there's come, no street yeah they're just stripes nothing nothing it's mayhem no if, white lines if we did it here you know? we, <laughs> we'd be dead yeah zero <laughs> zero of those Scott just went to, to uh, England, and he was saying that take any one of our bikes, okay, doesn't, any of them, and if you were to drop that in London, it would be like taking a Bugatti to, like, our outside here. Yeah. Just the, the all those bikes are 150s, 250s, and the Harleys that are there. Well, you tell it. Well, okay, so while I'm out there, there's no such thing as a building that's less than four stories tall, and they're all brick. So the sounds that we have on these bikes out here, if you took it out there, it would shatter glass. What? So, and the things, the stuff that I was seeing out there, there were three Harleys, an 883 might have been the biggest one, but it was, it was an experience. Because our bikes out there would just 
dwarf anything that's close. I wonder imagine? how it would be like in Germany because they've got those those bullet bikes on the autobahn that are doing. Yeah. I mean, they're they're, they're cruising at 100, 150 miles an hour, just cruising. Crazy. Oh, yeah. It's fast, crazy fast, and I think I get my bike up to a hundred and something twenty maybe before I get nervous and sweaty. But I think I'd be poking along. But those bikes, those they're only riding like six hundreds or, yeah. you know, little. Little bullet bikes. Those bullet bikes are different. Though. They are. I ride, yeah. I ride a uh, Kawasaki ZX-10R as well. I have one of those. Oh no, as kidding! Well. And uh, it's a. I mean, it's not. I, I, if I have to make a choice, it's Harley. But once in a while, you know, <laughs> it's nice to go a little fast. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> once in a while, you know, quick, quick ride to the gym, quick ride yeah. to work, the office. You know, you're you're. Zip. You're, you're there. Quick. You're there. But it's a, it's, Key a, word. it's a helmet and jacket. You know, like, I don't get on it unless I have my helmet on. Like, right. I, I might ride my Harley to the supermarket in, in flip-flops if I really have to. Yeah. Know, but I wouldn't get on. DOT approved flip-flops, DOT. boys and girls. Yes, yeah. Only DOT. Safety first. Only safety DOT first. <laughs> oh, man. There was a dude that rode his motorcycle into the Harley dealership when we were there for bike night, and he was wearing flip-flops and shorts, and he got off, and there was, like, all of these, like, guys that, are, that have the all the gear all the time motto. You know what I mean? And they just were, like, Quietly, just all shaking their heads over there in the corner. It's just like, <laughs> the cone of shame was on his head. In that yeah, moment. yeah, he pulled into the wrong place to be wearing flops and shorts. It was funny. Oh man, I've wondered how that would be re- received if you showed up and like take your pants off and you got you know swim trunks or something on, <laughs> flip your flip flop flops on, walk around the biker events. What's up, guys? Yeah, it's hot as hell show. out there. Todd wears his shorts everywhere. Todd, it, even in the 20-degree yeah. ride that we did, he when had shorts When it was freezing time. cold, yeah. That guy is bulletproof. Doesn't he wear boots, though, with shorts? Hey. He's got, um, I think they're just some pretty, no, I think they're work boots. I think he's got rocking some, like, yeah. Uh, boots, yeah. Huh. He I can go I got, that route. He said, I got the boots to protect me, but the shorts, this is it. Yeah. This is it. He strikes me as one of those guys that probably never wears pants. Long pants, except to church and funerals yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I believe that. Like middle of winter, he, he still has shorts on. Yeah. yeah. He's a good dude. I've Those known guys. him for like 25 years, that guy. You know, now that I think about it, I've never I've never seen him in pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been shorts. In those 25 years. In 25 years, pants. I've only seen calves and kneecaps. That's funny. Okay. He does have one hell of a tan line. Yeah. Oh, that farmer tan is going to, that, that's a couple years. To, oh, yeah. You're going to have to take, take Bur- tanning for uh, six to eight months minimum before that fades away. That's right. My dad, one time, I was about 12 years old, and he, uh, we went to a baseball tournament, first baseball tournament of the year, right? And we were living up in Wyoming, and it was in Nebraska, one of the small towns on the border there. And, uh, like, it was actually the first weekend. It was hot, everything. So he goes into the thing, and all the coaches decided they were going to take their pants and make them into shorts. Some jants? And some jants, yeah. Some baseball <laughs> pant jants. And he goes into the, the tanning salon, and he's like, hey, I need to get tan real fast. <laughs> real, oh, fast. real, real That's how fast. It works. Great she, Orange me up. And the girl was like, "No, I think you should probably. Have you ever been tanning before?" And no, no, I don't. But give me the turbo. I don't. I don't want to do this all day, right? <laughs> <The> turbo. <laughs> so she goes, "Well, I have the turbo bed, but you know, maybe you should do two minutes in there." He's like, "Oh no, how long do they normally do it?" Ten minutes. Dope. <laughs> You're gonna want to build minutes. up a bit of a base. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he had that. He had because he didn't even take his shorts off. He rolled them up, oh, so it was baby. just like right off of his crotch line. Oh, he had that for three years. That, <laughs> the burn like, marks. It was so burnt he couldn't walk stripes. around. The whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew a so guy funny. that passed out in the weeds up at Echo, like for six, eight hours in the sun with this like cross body strap thing that he was wearing. Oh and, no. You know, for two two summers, one summer went by, and the next summer he still had <laughs> this tan oh line, this white strap, <laughs> right, white white line right there. It was, it was insane. Oh man, I was in the Navy, and they, you know those uh, Gilligan hats that they wear in the Navy. Yeah, and the, I had a line across my forehead for like three years that could, wouldn't go away. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, they call it in the Navy. They call it the grinder reminder because the big parking lots where they grill you, uh, they call them those grinders. All the sailors are out on the grinders. The grinder reminder. The grinder reminder. You take that thing off, and there'd be like three hundred dudes with a line right across the oh middle of their hell. forehead. Dude, I went to Australia a couple of years ago, and uh, the sun's a little different out there. Southern Hemisphere. And I'm a fair-skinned guy. <laughs> He's a ginger. So, in case you didn't know. Yeah, we get there. And I'm like, let's go to the beach for like an hour, you know. I'm thinking an hour is not that big of a deal. I put a little bit of sunscreen on, but never reapply. Oh. And then the next morning, I am just 
this cherry tomato <laughs> blisters and everything <laughs> forever and then we went surfing like t- two days later we went surfing and i took the bodysuit off and i'm just like all my skin's gone it oh. peeled off in that oh, bodysuit just having that like, layer of sweat between yeah. the layer of skin that and was it just coming. like Ooh. Ooh. and i like took the bodysuit off and like Gonna I, I shed my skin into this bodysuit. Oh, no. You're like a brand new <laughs> and then baby. I tell the dude, like, hey, sorry, bud. This is, <laughs> this is full Get of Get me back to the hotel. I got to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, take, take an ice bath. It's gnarly. Oh, man. Terrible. It Terrible. It was awesome, stuff. though. It was awesome. Well, I've, I've got a sunburn um, from riding on, from our rides. I'm, I'm tanning on top and not so much like I was yeah. tanning. I've got a couple of good lines happening from. From the motorcycle ride. They're pretty so my, good. Uh, my shirt blows up, so I'll get like a wrist tan. Yeah, wrist I've got tan. the reverse, the reverse almost. It's fading away now, but I had a had a real nice glove line tan for yeah. for several weeks. Scotty's got a good glove Scotty's tan. Scotty's going to say, oh. "I'm see it on camera." Oh yeah. my gosh, look there at that! Okay, you win. You win. He's actually yeah. currently wearing gloves. I got that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those are the the inspection gloves, the white ones. Yeah, the ghost hands. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, that's all good stuff. I'll tell you, um, it's just been too dang hot to ride your bike the last couple of days. Yeah, it's, it's been just hot. too hot. You have to wait till it cools off. And, and then, then it rains. rains. And then it rains. Yeah. 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 Which is nice. It actually feels pretty nice. When I was riding that eight, the eight day ride that I did, it would rain um, when we were coming back through um, like Moab and that, uh, what's that, Green River down there. Yeah. And it, you would be just soaked and then you'd just be super dry in like seven minutes because yeah. it just, it was that. Boom, 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 boom. It happened maybe three or four times. It was awesome. It was like the best part of the day, getting soaked. I could have gone for a little rain this past weekend. We got a little lucky with the cloud cover coming back. Oh, yeah. It was only 97 degrees. Yeah, only 97. But if the sun's not beating on you, it's not as It's way better. It really wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Once we got down and I was on 15 going to Leighton, it was pretty hot. Yeah. But before that, I was like, man, this is nice. It's amazing how much snow is still up there on top in Mirror Lake. Did you see all the snow when we were up by? It's um, wild. It was so cool up there. It was so beautiful. Nice. Up on Mount Baldy and the whole thing. Yeah. Have you ever done the Monte Cristo ride? No. Okay, no. so you sent me that in a text message. What is that? Uh, so the, I, I uh, met a guy this week, um, and he says there's two rides, the Monte Cristo ride and the Fair, Fairfield, Fairview ride. And he says they're the best rides in Utah. And I said the heck you say and he told me a little bit about it and he just said the roads are wide it sounded like cascade springs the, the, the roads are newer they just paved them and they're just wide sweeping turns and so i'd like to do a little research and and try them out he says they're not too long they're shorter than mirror lake and it would be i think it'd be a lot of fun yeah. to do some exploring one of them you go up like you're going towards uh, a bogdan canyon and around and up and he he um he, he volunteered to, he rides he volunteered to take us That'd be awesome. On a Sunday or so. Okay. Let's line that up. Okay. So we don't have one scheduled yet for this weekend. We do have the fights this weekend. Yeah, Are you that's, coming? If that's the best ride, we're, not, we're yeah. all missing out on it. Yeah. Yeah, because I've never heard of that one. Well, yeah, and the thing is, is that's what I love about riding um, with new people all the time is because I discovered Provo Falls. Yeah, I've been driving go. past Provo Falls for 20 years. Oh, you wouldn't like, even see it. You wouldn't even know that it's there, and it's just amazing. It's yeah. a cool little spot, you know, and... So that's what I like about riding with new people because they're like, oh, haven't you, you haven't heard about Provo Falls? Yep. And you just check it out. So I'm down. I'm down Everyone to learn. has their favorite spots. And yeah. You need to learn all the favorite spots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So those are two I'd like to get, uh, try on. His name is Mark Cooper. He rides a big old uh, Harley uh, something or other. It's a nice bike. It's, I think it's a 2022. Um, I think he feels conservative as a rider. I think he'd be fun to take with us, but... He, uh, I don't think he's much of a, he's not a Rob. That guy drives fast. <laughs> that guy. That guy. Went, went that guy got us in trouble this last like weekend. <laughs> yeah? You got in trouble? <laughs> no, Teresa was saying her report she didn't like when it came back. Em talked to her for about two hours. Well, like, I would be more concerned about that back tire. Yeah, don't yeah, worry about the honest. speed. You're riding on the, the belt. Like the, actual wow. belt, like chunks of the really, tire really. are gone. Yeah. yeah, that's brave. On the back, especially. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess back or front, it doesn't really matter. But in fairness, we, Trent, beautiful human, love him, want him to come more, but we did give him the nickname of Thanos, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that fits. That fits. Okay. 
and I don't know that he could get down far enough to look up underneath the bags and everything to see the tires. He's a giant. He is okay. a giant. He makes he makes Rob look small. It's like the equivalent of me to Rob. That's Rob to it, it Thanos. Trent. It is. Thanos, yeah. Like when I came in your backyard and you guys were in the pool, I was like, that guy is enormous. Yeah, he's a big dude. He is the nicest man. Uh, I met him at Goldman Sachs, and then he I told him the story about Thanksgiving's Heroes, and he signed up to be a golf sponsor. He signed up to thing and the thing and the thing. He just was like, first in line, he's like, yeah, man, that's all, that's all I needed to know. That's something amazing that I'm learning a lot lately is how many people are just like, looking for opportunities to do good yeah just feel like it's overlooked there's so many so many reports of people doing bad we're missing all the opportunities that people are doing good and there's a lot of good happening out there right now it's amazing hmm. and but he's got his own thing too right yeah he uh Enavive is a water filtration system and he we live in one of the highest um water polluted states in the united states because of the mining and all of the different things, the hard water and the different things that we have happening, especially out where I live in Riverton and, you know, Magna water. It's no joke. You walk on that stuff. And um, he is like on a mission to get people drinking healthy water. And he talks about like the birth effects that have been happening because of the water and um, the cancers that have been coming in and all these different things are just like prolonged exposure to to bad water. And I always think in America, like, man, we're so lucky we get to drink our water. And I, I've never... I have a hard time drinking Magna water, I'm not going to lie, but I drink right, oh, out of yeah. the, right out of the fridge, which is pretty much out of the tap. And I've never thought anything of it because that's how I was raised. I drink out of the hose most of right. my life, for gosh sakes, yeah. you know. And so the odds of me getting cancer from, from all that is actually pretty good. Pretty good, I'd say, yeah. But I think about my daughter and how these chemicals have continued to increase, and he's just, like, on a mission. He's, he's fanatic about it. When he starts talking about it, like, you're just like, whoa, this guy really... Oh, absolutely. He believes in what in he's selling. Too. Yeah, he really believes in what he's selling. And so that's what makes him successful is because he's not yeah. selling you like a, a bill of goods. Like right. you should get a water filter. No, he's he'll go in and test your water for free. And he's just like, look, it's almost like it's a non-argument. Like you can't be like, well, I'm, I'm fine. No, he's like, check this. Sh- you're check, not. Yeah, that's you're in not. you. That you're drinking this every day. And you know what that does to your body? And just like I haven't had him come test my water because I haven't been in a position to do it yet. Um which is dumb. I bought a motorcycle. I bought a truck. Like, I've been in a position to, like, improve my health. What am I doing? Going fast. <laughs> he says I improved it. Honestly, I bought a motorcycle yeah. and a truck. Yeah. <laughs> I like to go fast. Anyway. Well, he was saying it's the ideal water is a reverse osmosis, and then it distills it. And I would assume his system does. That's what it does. It's got laser beams and stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. Laser beam. Yeah, he's got the system. Um, he in his um, store down in Orem. You go in there, and it looks like it's a scientific experiment. He's like, "Yeah, that's what we put in people's houses." And I'm like, "Dang, that's cool." But then, you know, you have to continually buy the filters yeah. because the filter um, gets right. The cartridges get to a certain point, and then they start to dump in the water, and it's actually worse for you because now you're getting like a super concentrated, concentrated oh. dose of the <clears throat> stuff that you've been avoiding for the past six months. Huh. So there's a lot to it that makes me a little bit nervous about getting one in my house but uh, here i am just drinking a diet coke so i should be fine that yeah. pretty much will kill anything else yeah. right out. yeah it should right and i grew up in the 70s so seriously i'm like you made it without seat belts yeah you drank Walmart out of the hose yeah yeah we and look at you you're still best, here as best as sandwiches <laughs> isn't that so crazy <laughs> to think about like i rode in the shell of a truck for most of my childhood yeah yeah if there and, was a shell sometimes you're then, just going down the freeway with no, it just, yeah. just whipping in the wind but my wife is like, we have to make sure this car seat is the correct car seat. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, uh, but do we? It's do okay. We? Yeah. Yeah, it has to be <laughs> rear facing. The specs and there's girder. Yeah. Girders. And it needs to hook into those little loops. Don't just use the be, seat belt. Can't be using the seat belt. No. no. Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing. Crazy. Where yeah, we're gonna have to nerf the world out. I feel like these uh, these new children, and I, I sound like my dad when I say shit like this, but like, we're in, we're in for a butt kicking. Yeah, we're just, oh, it's gonna get we're rough. there. We're, just we're, there. we're in it right yeah, now. It's coming. About Try, I hire these twenty-year-olds. They're ten ply. They are soft as hell. <laughs> <laughs> they they are soft, <laughs> and it's tough, man. I have to like, <laughs> guys, ply. come on. Oh man, but do they? Yeah, that's terrible. I saw a deal where every once in a while you'll get one that tries, and I'm like, okay, we can we can work with we this. We can try to rough you up a little bit. You're gonna have to pee on your hands. And, <laughs> To write a passage. Look directly at the sun for 10 minutes. 
<laughs> don't come into work until you've done these then things. We'll consider. Yeah. Oh man, did you see the uh, recruitment for the Navy? I was in the Navy for eight years, and so I kind of I kind of follow that team. That's my those are my guys. And uh, you know, there's the the SEALs, which is the greatest military force in the world. I don't care what 100%. anybody says. And so I'm fiercely proud of being a member of of this branch of the military. As you should be. Thank you very much. And now they have a new um, the new recruiter, the new head recruiter for the uh, military is a transgender bringing in transgender um, military and the transgender military uh, people that are coming in get a waiver if there's an active duty um, situation if we go to war they get to stay home that they, they don't horseshit. they don't have to get activated that's horseshit okay. then what's the point yeah what, what is you, the what, point what, what, what to get you, the benefits what are you doing in the military? yeah and <laughs> when i was in the navy there was all kinds of preferences but no one talked about it nobody was raising their hand saying this is what i'm into i mean to a point yeah that's private Keep yeah it to yourself yeah, it's none of my business we're all gonna go and do the same stuff together but in this um the system of equality if i have to go and i have to um, offer my life we have the same job but your sexual preference is different than mine or your identity is different than mine i am um i am just a just an asset i'm just a you know fodder for the canon and you don't have to go. You don't have to be a part of it, even though the military is spending just as much money on the so, training. Right. So now we're at a disadvantage for not You know what's interesting about that, though, is I wondered what the genesis of that was. For whose benefit was that actually put into place? Is it for the guys that are actually going over there, or is it for the benefit of the, of the individuals staying at home? Both. Do you know what I'm saying? Both. If I'm in, if I'm in a situation, I don't want to be worried about your... Yeah, you got to be your able to pronouns. trust. That's what I'm saying. You yeah, have to yeah, be able right. to trust yeah, your, your, your brothers. My life is in your hands. And if you're thinking about your pronouns and different things, I just want to focus on my training. I want to be sure that I can come back alive. And not fucking die. Yeah, we're not trying to die out here. We yeah, just don't want to die. Myself, no. And if, I'm, if I have to rely upon someone who's there, that is in the way, then they're not, they're not an asset to the team. They shouldn't that's, be allowed that's, in. That's kind of infuriating, man. It is infuriating. It is infuriating. That gives me a real hard it's, off. It's high risk. <laughs> to say the least but. it's it's a terrible risk and the thing is is that if that's the direction that we're headed um do you think we're the only ones you and i are the only ones that have noticed that that's the direction that the greatest continent in the world militarily speaking is headed like we are undermining our ability yes. to be authorities in the world I, yes I, and no by the same token we still have a lot of drones and a lot of yeah. bombs that and but our, maybe our, what they're saying is, is we don't need the people They'd have to be noticing. Oh, yeah, that's oh, yeah. what I mean. Oh, yeah. Have you seen the videos of them trying to fly helicopters? Like the, oh, God, no, but I want to. You Google it or go on YouTube and um, type in um, Afghanistan <laughs> helicopters. And, like, they're, it's, the silver it's terrible. Line. It's terrible, but awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> you see these helicopters, like, flying up, nice going up, going up, and then, whoo, like, nose diving into the ground. Like, there's oh, no baby. recovery. There is a silver like, lining to the like, story, then. What, what instructions did they read to yeah. think it was okay to Here's fly? the owner's so, manual. It's yeah. in English. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have it. Yeah, Jerry, have can it. you can you read? Have it. You got to read in here. Yeah. Give this a shot. So you'll know, you you be great. You'll, you'll, you'll be fine. Tomorrow. Yeah, there's a ton awesome. of them, of helicopters and tanks and all kinds of equipment that shouldn't be operated by novices. Just get uh, oh, yeah. ruined. But the seals don't have diversity hires, do they? They they're still holding out. You have to pass everything and and make it in one one standard. Oh yeah, seal, yeah. Right? You got to do. You still have to do the 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 whole thing and hell week and going through that whole be- that's just the beginning part then there's right. buds and then on top of that and on top of that like it's you if you are transgender and you make it through there good on good you. on you yeah you you made it right but there's no equal opportunity in the seals but i don't even think they they'll let girls try out but they don't they don't permit them in from any different <laughs> rules right like the seals are still 100 percent male uh, well, I don't. I don't know if they're one hundred percent. I don't think they're. 100, I don't know if they are, but I do know that they're one hundred percent course. You have to. You have to. You, you have, have to, to succeed yeah, this, at the this, course. This is the guideline, the parameter. You have to beat this. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. There's whatever, no argument. Whatever you no are, exception. This is our number. Yeah. If I met a female seal, look out. Seriously, like, that's <laughs> that would be that would be. In, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just see want someone to protect is. me. I'm not. I'm not trying to say Look anything. At, see if there is one. Yeah, Google it. Google it. I just, Google it. I just think um, it, I would feel safer. I mean, Annie's a badass. Don't get me wrong. She can regulate. She carries razor blades in her hair. Grew up in Magna, but a female seal. <laughs> in her that hair. would be wild. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she'll, she'll cut a fool. What, what was that? <laughs> 
you, you don't, not going to take my cue punch? <laughs> so as of 2022, there like were no female Navy SEALs. All right. Mother but Mother. is there a rule against them? No. Nope. Or just none have I don't think they have a if rule. They, it's it, but there's one standard. But yeah. Yeah, yeah if they pass the course, they right. become a SEAL. Okay. Which is what it should be anyway. That's yeah. what I tried sure. out for the SEALs. It should be the blanket for the whole military. We are looking for elite elite individuals. Right. Yeah. Not elite females or yeah. elite males. And if you meet this number, then welcome to the elite you got to kick ass. Because here's an idea. You could save some money that way. Hire five dudes that that's what they do okay and then you could fire 20 and give other jobs somewhere else jobs it'd be cheaper yeah so can i tell you about the time i tried out for the seals please go ahead i was in the navy boot camp and the seals come around and they're doing their whole their speech and i was i was impressed i was like dang that's that seems awesome i'm gonna try out for the seals (laughs) and uh we did the run i did really good on the run i ran cross country in high school so i kind of killed the run and then um can't tell by looking at me but i used to be fast on the ground and then uh, the swimming part came, and you have to dive off the the thirty meter, um, the highest platform, and you cross your feet. It's like a practice jump, like jumping off of a ship. And then you go to the bottom of the pool, and you have to swim up. And these guys are wearing their fins that are like the those flippers that are like the six foot long, just those long flippers. So they're moving through the water like missiles, like seals. And um, <laughs> the dude in front of me, or two or three in front of me, actually, he jumped in and went to the bottom and came up, and his nose was bleeding. And the seal went down and like dragged him up and kicked his ass on the way up. And I was standing in line to get up to jump off the platform. And they said this at the beginning. They're like, you can leave whenever you want. And I was just like, I'm going to head out. Seems like it's time for me to go. Because <laughs> if these are my friends that are beating my ass, like what am I getting myself into? Like I had this whole like, this is not, these people are not friendly. I don't, oh they were brutal. And so I left, I left before I even dove into the water. Cause that dude's nose, I'm pretty sure was broken. There was more blood in the pool than I had ever seen in a pool. Man. It was awesome. And I left. And you left. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Learned how to shoot what nuclear if it missiles just, off of submarines Maybe it was instead. that guy, he did, he talked a little shit or something. Doesn't matter. Same team. Well, they, they, if you if any of those shows about it or any indication, no, that's just part of the program. Yeah. You're going to get beat up. Yeah. You you're going to break well, some stuff. Well, yeah, I guess yeah. if you're going to be elite, you got to be able to get your ass kicked. Yeah, not me. I'm tough. Don't get me wrong. Not that tough. Yeah, good. They came on the base and they were playing basketball with us, and they were all <clears throat> wearing, like, Hawaiian shirts, and they had beards and tattoos, and they looked they looked fit. Don't get me wrong. They looked like they were in fantastic shape, but they just looked like a bunch of civilians that, like, we're maybe doing a job on the base, and they wanted to come and play basketball on their day off. Nope. <laughs> All SEALs. And we were up there, and this guy came down and brought his elbow around and hit his buddy on the same team. Bam! Hit him in the face with his elbow. And, like, split his, like, there was blood. And I'm just like, I got to go get some lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. Like, this full hard, contact. Hard today. Yeah. This is basketball, for contact, gosh sakes. Basketball. Like, yeah. You're not supposed to get injured in <laughs> basketball. Maybe a sprained ankle. Someone land on your yeah. toe. No. And they, um, it was the best team on. So we, I, my team was on, and they, they beat us. And then another team came on, and they beat them. And then some more SEALs came, and then they just played each other. And then the rest of us just kind of stood around and just watched, like, what the heck is going on? We're not on getting it? back in here. Yeah. There's, That's a street fight going yeah. on yeah. at a basketball game. <laughs> Laughing their asses off, having a great time, shoving each other down. Like there was, that's a, I'm pretty sure that's a foul. Pretty sure. <laughs> Five yards, holding, oh. you know. <laughs> oh. uh, I don't know the rules completely, but it seemed rougher than necessary. Huh. The seals are a different, they're a different, it's yeah, a it's different a, breed. It's a different breed, absolutely. Yeah. What is interesting though is the body type for it. You're, they're not like gigantic humans. Bodybuilders, they're like they're like five eight. They look yeah. normal guys. They, I guess when they take their shirt off, they're pretty cut up. But yeah. it's not like they're packing on a whole bunch of muscle. Or they're meatheads by any stretch. Yeah, no, they're just fit. They're yeah, just fit. And they are tough. Yeah, the guys that were on the base, none of them. I was taller than all of them. All the seals, I was taller than each every one of them. I mean, I thought huh, we're gonna school these kids. <laughs> nah. <laughs> No, like average height for them is my size. Yeah, they're yeah serious crowd. So that's the thing, that's the deal. Hmm. All right, here's a question for you. I'm listening. If you would, if red pill, blue pill, you gotta take one of them. Okay. Would you rather go back to 10 years old with the knowledge that you have now, or would you rather go back to 25 without the knowledge that you have now, but you start with 50 million dollars? Oh, that's easy. 10. 
right. with the knowledge. Yeah. yeah. If I was 10 years old, $50 million would be nothing. And by, by the way, if I got $50 million when I was 25, It'd be gone. I'd have blown it on okay. s- nonsense. But now here's, <laughs> the, here's the real question. On that timeline, because mm-hmm. if you talk to anywhere up to, call it 30 years old, right? The 30-year-olds, they're going to take the $50 million because their knowledge base is not more valuable than the $50 million. Oh, they haven't realized. They haven't realized what it is. So, huh, it, okay. so at what age does your knowledge actually become more valuable than the $50 million that you would get at 25? Oh, that's a great question. Wow. Um, individually speaking for all of us, I think, I yeah. when that comes in, but definitely somewhere that 35, 36, you start realizing, like, you know, you get the, I would, if I knew then what I know now, yeah. I mean, how many times? Have, how much money could I have made if I would have, could have, would have, yeah. should have, those things start to happen. I used to go up to the oldest guy at parties and I would say, tell me something true. And there was this guy, he had to be 70 in his 70s. And I said, tell me something true. And he looks, they always give me the look like, what are you talking about? I'm like, come on, just one nugget. Damn just give kids. Me, yeah. Tell me about him. Get away from me. Anyway, this old guy looked me over and he goes, you know what, Rob, you don't know shit till you're 50. And I was 35-ish in that 35 to 40 range. And I was like, I, like, I know all the shit. Yeah, what you're you wrong. About? You're wrong, old man. I'm smart. <laughs> shit. And now I'm in my 50s and I look back and I think man I didn't really know anything I didn't. Yeah. and I, I, I wonder if I'm going to feel that way when I'm 60 if I look back and think God, I'm really I just feel like learning becomes exponentially much faster I'm learning at a higher rate of speed and I, I would yeah. imagine you guys feel that way too mm-hmm. there's just more information available and it's just pouring in at a rate that's almost uncomfortable sometimes Yeah, there's, yeah, just, yeah. there's just no way I can explain if you think about how fast how much you've grown in the past 10 years if you just you're in your 30s Think about the, the next 10 years, like what that volume will look like. It's, right. it's bananas to you think just, it. Conceptually, you understand so much more, I think, is that, as that, you know, as you said, hey, tell me something true at 50. Well, I think the same thing at 60. I think conceptually, you just understand, you just understand more. Yeah, yep. The thing is, is I was, I'm kind of an ageist. I've always been an ageist. I've always thought, you know, when I was a boy and I'd look at my, my mentors who were in their 30s, I would just be like, damn, that guy's old. He's got kids and a job. And now... Um, when I was in my 30s, I would look at the people at, when they were in their 50s, and I would just think, man, that guy's just not relevant anymore. Like, he just isn't keeping up, and his fitness and all the different things. And I, I don't feel that way about myself, but I, I, I've become more patient as an ageist as I've grown older because I get it. It gets, it gets harder to be older, but I just feel like I've learned so much more. I think that my wisdom, you know, Socrates says um, wisdom is um, understanding that you know nothing. Yeah. And I, I feel that way a lot. <laughs> and I know a lot. I know quite a bit. I'm well read. I read all the time. And I just, the more I read, the more I learn, the less I know. And, you know, even I go to these different places and I learn about these different jobs. And there's just so many, like, deep diving into what you do, Topher. I have no idea, like, all of the things you have to know in order to be effective at the thing you do to make a living. Or you. And I know your business pretty well i've owned a title company and i thought i had a handle on it i have no idea everything that needs to happen in order to successfully run a title company right and that, being well known in like your industry you know or something like that it's like it's so much that goes into like you know no one knows you outside of your industry but in your industry some people know you because of what you you know what you bring to the table like yeah. that yeah. it's really made me appreciate experts like i used yeah. to not have any um the people who don't appreciate experts are they're, they're not good at anything so I have people that don't want to pay me my commission as a real estate agent, and I'm really good. I'm a good real estate agent, yeah. and um, they don't want to pay me that. It's I, I have to believe that's because you don't know what it is to be really good that's, at yeah, something. Exactly. And the more, the better I become at my art, selling real estate or, or the charity, the more I appreciate specialists. And if someone tells me that I can fix your bike because of the thing of the deal, you're my guy. I yeah. would rather you yeah. do it than anyone else. Yeah. You're worth your money. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, experts. I like that. Yeah. I've really grown to appreciate experts a lot more. Where before I was kind of cheap. Like, oh, I can, yeah, I can yeah, do yeah, it. Do it. We're right. the, we live in the do-it-yourself state. And I think there's things I can still do, but I can't do it as well as, as Jared does. He's he's amazing at that. That's He does it all day. It's, he's really – that's amazing. And so I, I think yeah. that's a sign of a good leader and good wisdom, right? So, a good leader can identify what everybody is good at yes. and then trust them to do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's a book called Rocket Fuel that goes into that in great detail. And it talks about really understanding your lane and then appreciating the other lanes. It talks about the great partnerships like the, the Jobs, you know, Steve Jobs and uh, what's his knuckle and all these different companies that really did well. There's two people that were kind of polar opposites. In fact, sometimes they hated one another. 
but they're doing really well because they stayed in their lane and they knew that that boy over there he's got it he's got it i don't have to worry about that and so that's what the, the great companies have really kind of taken off because of that so i try to think about that all the time like what is it i don't want to be i don't want to take back is there somebody better at it than i am it's weird and, it, and then the <clears throat> maturity to say that person is better yeah you yeah. know yeah you have to really swallow your ego when annie first joined me in real estate um, I had been in the business about eight months and I was losing papers from here to my car. Like I was losing stuff and I wasn't getting things initialed and I like <laughs> terrible at sending things electronically for signatures, like just terrible at all of those things that really get you paid. That's where the rubber hits the road. Yeah. I can negotiate. I can read a contract. I am amazing. I'm a bulldog when it comes to negotiating, but I was just losing stuff. And so I wasn't getting paid on all my deals. There was like... I had five deals pending that had closed because I hadn't, I didn't get all the paperwork put together. Stupid. Yeah. And so I called her up and I'm like, hey, babe, she was the um, executive assistant for three salespeople at a large company called Zag here in Salt Lake. And I said, hey, you need to get your real estate license and come on over. And so that's really our superpower is like, I, I don't send a contract. I don't write the contract. I negotiate it and I call her up and she writes it beautifully. Yeah. She has the language. She understands exactly what needs to be said. And all when, the papers are there. Yeah, everything's signed and initialed. <laughs> Crazy how that works. Yeah, and people have been like, oh, so she's like your transaction coordinator. And I'm like, no, no, I'm her sales assistant. Like, I'm yes. <laughs> I'm here to help her do her job well. And when we do that, I stay in my lane. I mean, the reason I'm telling you this story is because it took me a minute to, like, surrender. To, like, yeah. be like, okay, you're, you're better at you're that better. than I am. Because I would tell her, this is how I do it. This is how I like it. This is the way that I want it. And she was like, okay. We're doing it better than that. And like, She's like, shit, throw this. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Cool, thanks for your ideas. Yeah, appreciate your... Yeah. We're going to do it this way. You're doing it wrong for eight months. <laughs> you <but> like shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and we've never looked back. We've been we've been wildly successful ever since. And I always tell people, it's, I work hard, but I stay in my lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. It's important stuff. Life is easier when you do that anyways. Stay yeah, in. yeah. It's easier. Thanksgiving's Heroes has taken off because I found a, that um, executive director, Jenny. She's so smart, man. She worries about things I don't even think about. She'll bring things up, and I'm like, huh. You're like, yes. Yeah, that's a good idea. We should, we should consider that. <laughs> and she tells you it's already done, and I need you yeah. to stand over there, and you're going to talk like, about this. Yeah. Sign here. Go, sign, sign here. Yeah, right. go, go hug somebody. Go shake some hands. Okay, 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 okay. I got it. I can do that. <laughs> There's a camera over there. Go stand in front of oh, that one. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. But that's good living. That's what that is, finding the right people to help you do the, what, you, what you should need to do. Yep. I think the hard part is getting them to, to want to. Like, how do you find the right people that want to do? Well, to you're, buy like, you're an expert at that, at finding people and connecting people. I like to call it aces like, and places. Aces and places. Aces and places. Aces and places. Hmm. you got to have your aces in the right places. Yes. Yeah. I think that is a superpower that I've had. I'm, oh, a, I'm a good connector, getting people together that I think are going to align. You're good at reading people, too. Yeah. Thanks. I am good at that. <laughs> now, fuck you. We're going to move on to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Next. Me, me, me. Yeah. This is about and me. Enough, enough about Rob. <laughs> yeah. Oh, which reminds me something about me. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Have you guys seen Oppenheimer yet? No. no I want Did to. Did you? Can we do like a dude's night? Because Annie doesn't want to go. She wants to go see the Barbie no. movie. No, thanks. No, thanks. Hard pass. Yeah. I had my daughter I've tell me. Set, I've heard some stuff about that movie, and I think it is a hard, it's hard to pass. Yeah. yeah, the Barbie, the Barbie, Barbie movie. movie. So let's let's do an opera. There's a, there's a, it's a live like action a remake? one. Remake? No, it's live action. It's like it's not a cartoon. It's like a real humans doing it. Huh. My daughter told me about it. And my 21 year old, she went Sounds to see it. Good. And she's That's like, good. The Barbie movie? No. The, so she says to me, Dad, whatever you do, don't go see the Barbie movie. And this this is the daughter that's just like me. Done We're, and done. Yeah, and I'm like, okay. Fair enough. She's I won't, like, even, won't even try it. Got it. So Oppenheimer, we got to figure out a time and make that happen. I would love to. Yeah, yeah I would love to see that. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to have more than that. <laughs> I just feel like I'm carrying you fellas. Let's go. All right. Here's a question for you. If you had $30,000 right now, and assuming didn't have to pay bills, nothing like that, strictly investment, what would you do and why? I'm very interested in this question. Oh, weird. Are you answering it? No, I want you to answer. No, it's a question for well, both of you. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand today. What am I investing it in? I have my answer. We're sitting in it. 
Okay. <laughs> I like that. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna throw it into a few cryptos that I'm. Are you a crypto gang? A little bit. Enough, okay. Enough, so here's my translator to, to this world. And, and lose a lot of it. <laughs> what do you think's crypto. happening right now? Think it's gonna actually take off or? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't foresee anyone doing a major takeoffs like we've seen with runs in the past. But I don't know. Like I'll buy and sell and watch them go up and down and buy and sell and just kind of just just slowly. Seems like it's become more of a fearful market than it used to be. Like people were very um, aggressive with crypto, and now it's just like everyone I think who's that, been in it a minute has been burnt in yeah. some degree. Yeah. That FTX thing just soured everyone's taste. I think yeah. as far as I think how, he walked. Oh. He's out, <laughs> done and over. He paid like a million dollar fine, and that was it. Oh, well, it's a bargain. Bargain. Come up. Yeah, he did all right on that. <laughs> he deal. Did all right on that one. Traded six billion for a million. I think that makes sense. I'd buy a townhome com- condo. That's what I would do. They've got townhome condos right now for a sale at three hundred and twenty-one to three hundred and fifty thousand in Eagle Mountain, Saratoga Springs area. You can get in at thirty thousand dollars. You can put down enough for an investment property, so you're not paying PMI. And then I would hold that piece of property and let it hold it for probably three years. Interest rates are very high. I'd work with a lender that does a free five-year refi, free refi. Because I think that the rates are going to drop again, not to what we've seen historically. We're not going to get back to the twos in my lifetime, I, I don't no, believe. Right. <clears throat> but I do believe it's going to get back into the low fives, maybe even high fours before I'm done with this this mortal coil. And I think that's what I would do. I would do a buy and hold. I don't know if I'd Airbnb it because Utah's like ridiculous with Airbnb. I'd do a long term on that just to cover my mortgage and build equity. I'd do a slow gain. But someone else paying my mortgage is like someone giving me money every month. And so that's what I would do with it. I would hold that property for three to five years, and then I would, I would do the first year. I would do a rapid depreciation on it, get the tax credit of about eighty thousand dollars is what you would get. Then I would roll into the next one. I would try to end up in that three to five years with three to five properties, and then I could roll that first one and sell it. That's what I do to become a millionaire. I could do it with thirty thousand dollars. Ready, go. Hmm. That's what I would do. You could do it on thirty. You could do it with thirty. You'd start out. You'd start out slow. The first. Five years. Three to five years would be slow growing, but once you do that first year, once you own that property for 12 months, you can do that rapid depreciation and get that tax credit. Rather than pay Joe, Uncle Joe, to spend the money on sending it wherever he wants to send it. God damn, Uncle Joe. Joe. Uh, you're going to take that money, that credit, and you're going to take that money that you would have paid in taxes. You'd be very disciplined, and you put it in your next down payment. Okay. Uh-huh. So with this... Could you do this and set it up where it didn't need anything else from you? Like 30000 cash on the table, start, go, or would it take more to supplement it getting through? As far as cash? Yeah. No, that's you could do it with $30,000, and then you'd want to get somebody occupancy. in there in a quick hurry. Yeah, so occupancy would be the issue. Yeah, you're, uh, they're paying your mortgage day one as long as you're... You know, so numbers. there's zero risk because uh, the way the properties are going, equity is growing so quickly again. We're, grow- we're back in an equity growth position. If you... if things fell apart you could sell it tomorrow and you would still be ahead not as much ahead as to be wealthy but that you're not going to be financially ruined either okay yeah reducing the asset to cash you still make money you're good you're sure you'd be good hmm. so there's no way to lose in this situation the problem is is that we don't have enough long-term discipline that i'm going to hang out for three to five years and do this turn everybody wants to get their thirty thousand dollars and buy a camper or a pickup truck right. or a motorcycle <laughs> or something me for example, but, the, but I'd love to buy a motorcycle. But but the way that the market is right now, I feel that we've had uh, inflated uh, rates uh, of uh, equity, and those have slowed way down. And so a lot of people say, "Well, I'm going to wait to get into the market." Well, rate, prices are dropping S- significantly. Prices are dropping on houses, and so if you can afford the interest rate, which you can, uh, buy the house because you're going to pay. The interest rate can change, but the price doesn't change. And so if you can get the house for less, then you're winning. And so I just bought a house in Grand Junction, and I'm looking to buy another one. I want to buy more houses. And so as a real estate agent, I tell this to people, and they're just like, oh, it just isn't a good time. I'm going to wait till after the election. Or the more you wait, the less you can afford. Your dollar does less and less every week. Every week, your money does less. Sleeping on the bag. Right? Sleeping on the bag. So how long have you been in the real estate industry? Almost 10 years. 10 years. And you're an investor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How many properties or doors have you had? one time for four and you flipped properties as well yes. so the longest property that you've held you probably still have still it. holding yeah, yeah. Still holding. so i liquidated everything in the last two years which was super lucky 
it was good yeah. for me to do that the way that the market shifted but now I'm back into that position where I want to be buying so for thirty thousand dollars you could become a millionaire in ten years you could take that money and roll it and roll it and roll it some people will complain that they're kicking the can down the road with the rapid depreciation on taxes but so what when you sell it you have the equity in the home and you're gonna pay the taxes regardless and so you might as well leverage it now today and start making sure. money. Yeah, the, the rapid depreciation is key with all investment properties, I think. Yep. Get that money out of there, get it back into something else. That's yeah. Hmm. The, 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 the rapid depreciation on my property that I bought in uh, Grand Junction, I paid, that we paid like $340,000, the estimated depreciations, and the $80,000 tax credit. $80,000, you're writing off two point, is it eight or 2.3% every year on your house, that's a standard deduction. Why can't we take that all up front? That's how that works. There's no there's no magic to it. It's just taking that credit up front. You still have a deduction on the property, but it's not going to be the 2.3 or 2.8, whatever your accountant is doing. You just take it all up at front. And it's madness that people don't know this and can't flex that way. So multimillionaire, I think if you were aggressive, you could do it in 10 years. Yeah. And by aggressive, you just mean don't get greedy and... Keep stick with the program and keep, keep going. Your head, keep your head down. Play the yeah. long yeah. game. Just keep working your job. Like Every keep, time that comes Like up forget it almost down. even yep. exists. Yeah. Because yep. it's, not, it's not a piggy bank. You're just rolling that forward, rolling that forward. And then you get to a point where if you wanted to sell, you could. If you wanted to hang on to the property and, and it starts to cash flow. I've got a friend, I should say an acquaintance, and he has multiple doors. He, he would buy a con or duplexes and fix one side. And then he'd go over and knock on the door on the other side and say, hey, do you want to move into this side? It's only going to be $300 more a month in rent. And they'd see like new counters and paint and carpet. And they're like, hell yeah. So on the weekend, they would trade sides and then he would fix that side. And then he would, and he did it and he did it and he did it and moved a bunch of times. The guy's a total creep. However, he is going to be rich. He, well, he is rich. He's, he's wildly successful, unhappy, huh? but rich. <laughs> oh, yeah. He'll be busy. He'll die alone. Other reasons. He'll money die. issues. And yeah, he'll die done. alone, but he'll be die a lot with a lot of money when he does. Huh. You know who I'm talking about? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I would do with 30000 That's a long answer, but... All right. Let's change it up a little bit because you intimately know that sphere. Mm -hmm. If you didn't do a real estate play, what would it be? I would get f a full body tattoo <laughs> there and you go. get into porn. <laughs> porn. Just there you go. Making it. The Make all the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Reverse OnlyFans, yeah. my other million dollar idea. <laughs> Tony the Tattoo. You know what I mean? I changed my name. I have an alias. But Only glands. Only mans. <laughs> I don't know what I would do. If I didn't have real estate, I don't know what I would do. It's one of, real estate's one of those things I look back upon. I wish I would have got in when I was in my 20s and 30s. I wish I yeah, would have. Yeah. Like, yeah. You said that a thousand and times. And you could go back and tell your 10-year-old self. That. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I mean. Okay. I, I would own a house like... The minute I turned yeah. old enough to own a house, I'd be putting down a down Absolutely. payment on my first house if I could go back to yeah, my ten-year-old self. My mom tried to hand me the, the keys to the castle, and start working with what she was doing when I was seventeen, eighteen years old, and I. Uh, He's a, in, from a real estate dynasty, by the I, way. Oh, really? Yeah, and I, second and I generation. Decided that that wasn't for me. I wanted to go sell door to door. I yeah. wanted to go do this. Mom, wanted, you don't know anything. You don't know what you're talking That's about. That's not as cool. She, as she's a first-generation self-made millionaire, you don't know shit. I'm gonna go do this. Yeah. Turns out she. Uh, she knew what she was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Ten years uh, earlier on this, and I don't know where I'd be, but it would be a lot a lot further down the road. Yeah. Huh. Well, I think about if I could go back when I was 10, and I knew that the 80s were coming, and there was going to be the great, you know, the recession okay. that was coming, and I could, like, I could load into that and just, like, sit patiently by them. When all the market crashes, I'm like, I'll buy that house and that house and that house and that oh, house. Man. and and load up and then build it again and then when the crash happened again do it again and there's been three opportunities to become a multi bagazillionaire oh, yeah. if you would have known people that, that got on that bandwagon and yeah. those windows of opportunity are, are killing it, killing it. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It. They, it's done they've yeah. already done it they killed it hmm. but you still have to have the money up. to start that's the hard part My, the thing is is that the houses were well I, back then yeah. yeah I mean I would have been starting out with a $56,000 mansion woo you know what I mean like that's yeah. doable the rates were like 17% but yeah bargain so what bargain. yeah <laughs> so what yeah yeah it wouldn't matter just yeah. have to hold on for yeah I was in Vegas I was growing up that's where I grew up when I was that age if I could have been in Vegas I'd have I'd have bought oh, that God, place yeah. out oh, think yeah. about it could you imagine oh it's insane yeah that multi, multi. two or three stock plays yeah 
Right. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Have a nice Betting week. on a couple Super Bowls. I'd be yeah. set, bro. Set. Just <laughs> done. Yeah, let's go. Instead, I'm over here trying to sell pictures of my feet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Getting a full body tattoo for what? Nice it's just not working. It's just not paying <laughs> off. Oh, man. Oh. All right, let's change the question. Let's change the equation a little bit. So if you if you already have the thirty thousand, that's you're saying that's the lowest that you could probably get to making a real estate play. No. No. Oh, What's no. A, what do you got? Well, if you've got good credit, you had ten thousand dollars, I could get you into a place. Ten thousand and good credit. Yeah. All day, twice on Sunday. Really. Oh yeah, you would be actually you would be kind of a prime buyer. Right now, you'd be surprised how many buyers are coming to the table right now with nothing. Hmm. And so they're coming in and they're, they're leveraging like FHA or they're doing uh, Utah housing. They're doing all kinds of these programs that are little to no cash down. $10,000 puts you in a position where you can outbid or out bargain on any purchase nearly, nearly, not always, but in the price range that you're hunting in that, let's say 3, 350 3 to, to 550, you're, you're king of the hill. 550 might be a little bit pushing it, but that three, 350 to 450, yeah, you're, you would be rocking it. I could get you in there and I could win against anybody. So $10,000, you could crush it. And I'm pretty sure if I'd have been focused when I was 10, I could have had $10,000 by the time I was 18. And yes. imagine if you Utah housed at 18 years old working at wherever you started working. Right. Utah housing on day one. Yeah. 18 year old in one day. Yeah. $56,000 home. I'd have, that'd have been paid off and totally cash flowing at a three hundred and fifty dollars or $500,000 range. Amazing. There's just no other opportunity, in my opinion, in the world to become wealthy like real estate in Utah. Maybe. Once you know the ins and outs. Yeah, once you understand the rules, once you understand how it works, that's, that's why you want to work with an expert. You want to work with somebody. All right, hold on, because now I'm interested, because my understanding was to bypass PMI and the first-time home buyer and all that stuff. Who cares? You're not going to bypass any of it, but your profit margin down the road. Well, in my head, I had like I need like 60 no, no, no. We, we 10 is a new number to me. And now you've charged my ears up. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've written checks back to people for buying homes. Yeah. If you're right. coming in with $10,000, you could put in, let's say, your earnest money. When you buy a house at $350,000, you have a $3,500 escrow. Oftentimes, titles right giving them back that check. Yeah, we're right. We're writing a check. I've, I've said this a times. It's we're paying you to buy a house today. Yeah. Essentially, we're giving you back whatever portion of your loan that you didn't use towards your. How fast could you do this? Bro. <laughs> this is what How I do. How far away from from my well, the, office would I have to go? <laughs> well, the thing is, is like the, the, in my in my investment, um, uh, you know, you call it your your risk. Like, what's my level of risk? I like to buy new because I don't. I'm not handy. I don't like to fix disposals. I'm not good at sheetrock and painting. I, it's the lowest thing on the uh, that I want to do. I want to. I want to get paid to talk. I don't want to ever have to pick up a hammer to work on a property of mine. So I want to buy new because I know at least for three to five years, I have nothing that I need to fix. The first year is covered in a warranty. You know, then I'm going to buy a home warranty for it. I'm going to take care of it. I buy condos because I don't want to fix the yard. I don't have to worry about sprinklers. I don't want to mow. Yeah, condos are great. Are great it's great, a great way to go. Great way to go. So they're all over the place. You can, there's the, uh, my favorite builder. There's a builder out there. I'll say it, Edge Homes. I really love Edge Homes, even though they've got kind of a, reputation for what happened at the point of the mountain but you walk into those condos and what you see is what you get there's no like this is this is the house but the counter's extra yeah, and those cabinets yeah, are extra and the windows doesn't come with windows, windows. i do agree Ed Jones <laughs> is one of the few people where this, this is what we're building and this is what you get and uh, nothing nothing there's no smoke because, and mirrors because all every, those guys every other sales present presentation or model i've ever been to yep you you walk in and it's beautiful and and uh, that's not anywhere close to what their sign says you can get in here at. Right. So, so they offer they so let's say example they're they're offering base price of a hundred thousand dollars for easy math. When you walk in, you're not looking at the hundred thousand dollar model. You're looking at the two hundred thousand dollar model because everything is upgraded: the sinks, the countertops, the appliances, the flooring. There's nothing that's not upgraded. Less paint. It's all. They can update the electrical, the switches, the plugs. Everything's yeah. upgraded. Three tone. Yeah, and so the thing is, is what you see is what you get with them. And they, if you walk in and they say that it's $100,000, you're paying $100,000. I really like that about a builder just because I'm, I'm 100% transparent as a real estate yeah. agent. I really like to know what I'm getting into. That transparency goes a long way. There's a couple of home builders that are that way too. I really appreciate. But as far as this condos go, they're tough to beat. Hmm. 
And where are they? They've got a couple of different um, areas that they're working in. Are they in were they in phase two or three out there past uh, Redemption? Yep. Redemption's out. It's phase two now, phase two or three. Yep. They're in out there, and that's... I, mean, I think those are still even viable. I know they're not as viable as getting in on phase one was, but... Yeah. But phase two and three, I think, still... Yep. So I'm buying... I like to buy in phase one. Phase one, they are kind of got the prices low because they're... Attractive. in Yeah. They're trying to attract in people, and then they get people in there, and then it's easy to build two and three in the different phases. Phase one is where the bargains are. So phase one, right now, the one that I know of, there's one in Farmington, and there's one in uh, Saratoga Springs. Pretty hmm. awesome. But there's other builders out there, too, that are amazing. Fieldstone Homes is amazing. Mylar Homes, there's a there's a bunch of them out there. There's a few that are terrible, and I'm not going to say their names. They're terrible. Run away. But more, more often than not, there's a lot of good builders happening out there. Interesting. Yeah. Now my Hamlet, wheels are turning. Hamlet's a good one. Hmm. Can you get a garage? Oh, yeah. Most of the condos that I've been doing are at least two cars. Two car standard, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you get two. That's my baseline requirement. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit of a requirement. I, I, I got to have two car garage. Yes. Yeah. And even that, that's that's not anywhere near what If I could get really that mean. and just like oh. a slice of grass, I don't even need much, just as big as this table. A lot, a lot of the ones that I'm helping people get into right now are right across from the clubhouse. And so you kind of have your own swimming pool and your own gym right there across the way. You know what I mean? Like there's some really sweet opportunities right now to get into these townhome condos that are, it's, it's ridiculous. I would, I would drive the extra little bit for two or three years and then take that and get my tax, do my rapid depreciation and buy that next house and rent that one out and kind of continue to upgrade. Are you going to suffer a little bit? Everything good in life is about a little bit of suffering. I mean, welcome to mortality. It's no, kind of how it goes. No pain, no gain. That's right, baby. <laughs> what are you looking at at a mortgage payment per month? Um, it depends on what you're coming in with. If you can do that ten thousand down, you're probably around. Uh, you know, it depends on your credit. There's a lot of variables, but let's just say twenty. Twenty. Yeah, twenty three hundred a month. You think twenty three? Twenty three to twenty seven is the range for about ten down on one of those. The last two that I've got in, that's what they've done. And then both of them came in. They were like, oh, we're going to put down 30000 or 40000 or big money. And they ended up going like as lean as possible. They didn't put anything in, just their kind of closing costs. And they're still under 3000 Hmm. Interesting. So if you have a little bit of money, that helps out quite a bit. Keep that payment low. Interesting. And how much are they going for? It depends on which one you get. They've got like the first floor, second floor, third floor. Everyone's different. So I'm always a big fan of the first floor. So about let's say three forty ish, three three anywhere from three thirty to three forty, depending on on which one you get. Hmm. Very curious. Yeah. I was curious. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot of things to think about. I do. Uh, I do love real estate because it's meaningful. You, if you sell a house. Or you live in a house, I should say. If you live in that house, even 10 years after you've sold the house, as you drive down the street, you're going to look down that street and see who's playing in your yard. It's always it's a, That's your house. That, it's like a family member. You can't quit it. And so I've sold technology. I've sold transportation. I've sold many things. And this is the only thing that's like long-term meaningful in people's yeah. lives. The reason I like doing it is because I feel like uh, there's a lot of divine intervention. A big decision like this isn't something that just is going to go unnoticed by God or the universe, whatever you want to insert in that language. There's a lot of intervention that happens. And so I spend my time sitting back kind of looking for the miracles and the deals. I'm doing a deal and it looks like, looks like it's going to fall apart and it does fall apart. Well, I have to, I honestly believe that they weren't supposed to be there and that there's another house in Bountiful that they were supposed to move into so that, so that little Johnny can meet the best friend that he's going to have for the rest of his life. And, or, right. Do you know what I mean? Whatever that is, I don't know what it is. I don't have any idea, but yeah. it just happens so... It's just not random. It's the only thing I've ever it's done divine. that's just... Yeah, it's divine. For sure. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I really yeah, dig that part of my job. Of purpose. Yeah. That is cool. I love it. Interesting. I like it a lot. A lot. <laughs> oh, man. If my, my dad were here, he would answer this question by saying, you'd have to go find something similar to <clears throat> houses, I guess, but you'd have to go find something, source it. This is what Aaron does, right? Yeah. You go and find something, source something out, and then sell it. So the right. biggest one that we went through when I was growing up is we discovered, now this was kind of before the internet really ruined this, 
but we were going to Colorado and Colorado was having a really bad depression in Salt Lake, Salt Lake, so it wasn't. And uh, we would go over there and we'd find these 70s, uh, 450 Mercedes, 450 SLs. We'd buy them for like two or three grand over there, literally drive them back. It took us a weekend to go through and clean it all up and we'd order this like the kit from, there's a magazine that we'd order all the dash cover and seat covers and all the stuff. We'd go through, we'd put everything in there and we'd turn around and sell them for Twelve to fifteen thousand here. What? The yeah. Hustle, the hustle. That is like, sweet. Like yeah, that's a turn. I don't know if you'd get mad at me telling this, but I'm relatively certain that when we first moved here, that's how my family survived for about two years. Buying and selling. Buying and selling cars. We'd go to Colorado, pick them up, bring them back. How would you get to Colorado? Would you like just take the train? Like... We would take a. It just depend. I flew out one time with my brother and picked one up. Yeah. That's where I discovered that vapor locking was a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Undo the gas cap. That stranded us at a very sketchy gas station. But, yeah, no, we would just go over. We were going over two, three times every you know, every other month, once a month, right. to go pick them up. Oh, yeah. And bring them back. Well, my uh, ex-in-laws, they buy, they go to the uh, trade show in Vegas, and they buy, like, fidget spinners. Mm-hmm. Just, like, these stupid ass toys that just take over the place you remember yeah. cabbage patch kids like there's all these they always trolls dolls trolls dolls yeah. holy cow or those cards those little like anyway the, the where they had the pogs and the stuff oh, like geez, that yeah they just would go down there and they would see like a trend and they would What's happening what was happening and then they bring it back here and they go to the trade shows and just clean up that's that's their business it's and they, interesting they, that, markets that like you that. brought up aaron because i've asked him this question I think you'd have to dig and he, hard. And he didn't give me that answer, the, the sourcing stuff. What was his answer? He said, you should take a little bit of it and day trade it. He is a big believer in that. And then you should buy real estate. He said that? Yeah. Oh, man, I'm wearing him down. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, the thing that's interesting about Aaron is, like, he's the see a problem, fill a problem guy. Like, he's always going around looking about, like, Huh, I could do that better. I could, we could make that more efficient. Or he, that's just how his brain the works. The way his brain works it's is so remarkable. interesting. Yeah. He's, he's, he's going to be on on Thursday. He's, oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, and okay. Landon and him, and I was planning on you if you want to. Oh, yeah. I'll be back. Okay. Oh, yeah. The way his brain works, like he'll tell me stuff where I'm just like, how in the world did you come up with that? And he's yeah. like, well, I just did some research. Well, how much research? I was yeah. on my, I was on the computer for like forty-eight hours. Just like he just digs deep. He, he just goes deep, right. deep. and then he's an expert awesome. in whatever he decides he's going to do. For example, the next time you see him, yeah, like we'll talk about something, and then the next time I see him, he's an expert. He's an expert. Yeah, and he's not afraid to take a risk. Like uh, when COVID happened, he had a couple of tents for the fireworks. Mm-hmm. Um, he he's one of the largest tent rental places. In the Western United States, and the the somebody came to him and says, "Hey, can you get tents for our uh, mobile testing units?" And he's like, "Sure." And so he gets a couple, and then he gets a call from like Missouri, <laughs> yeah. and they're like, "Hey, we need three hundred of those. Can you get them?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, I, I got them." And he goes and gets them. He was cashing, he but was see, but he found a source too. Checks. Yeah, so that's what he's really good at is like finding a need and filling a need. It's not just seeing a need, which is what I'm good at. Like, this sucks. This and is not he told, working. He told this story like. He had no idea where he was getting any of this. Yeah, right. He was right. just like, yeah, sure. I can do that. Oh, you need them Tuesday? Okay. Um, yeah. We'll have them Monday. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have them set up. We'll have them set up on Monday. He has no idea where he's going to get them. He has no out. idea. <laughs> like, the dude is just. make some phone calls. He is just fearless. It's and he doesn't sleep. across the country. He, he, like, talks about, like, I bought them. I went over to Missouri, and I picked them up, and then I drove to Thicketer, and I set them up, and just like, holy shit, when did yeah. you sleep, dude? He is just. He's, he's the hardest worker I've ever met. And I, I know some hard workers. The guy's a, he's a, a monster. Love that guy. Huh. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah. He found a opportunity for paddle boards, and he ordered a whole semi truck full of paddle boards, and Jeez. he had them, he had them printed with. Uh, he's got a business called uh, Tyrell Adventures, and so the bag says Tyrell Adventures, and it's on the board. Like it's, and these boards are like six hundred dollar, easily. These paddle boards yeah, are they're amazing. Nice. They're way they're nice. nice with a pump and the backpack and the, all the, everything that you need. And he has a whole trailer load of them. And he ordered them, and it was just the rage. People were buying these things like crazy. And then COVID hit, and so now he has a trailer <laughs> clear full of paddle boards because yeah, he, the market's been saturated. Well, that's <clears throat> one of the problems. But it, you put a good marketing team together. 
Oh he yeah, could get he, rid of him. he could totally do it. The thing is, is that he's got his fingers in so many pies that he right. just. It's just not a priority for him. And if they're out in his trailer that's parked out of the, the thing. It's like, it's, it's not cost him anything. Yeah, he, made right. that, he already made that, made that <laughs> Yeah. So he's one of those people that's good to know because I've called him up before and been like, hey, I need a eight-foot-tall pinata and a bubble machine. And he's like, okay. Yeah, let me drive down to my warehouse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what did we have at Andy's birthday party? An eight-foot-tall pinata and a, a bubble, bubble machine. A bubble machine. <laughs> not just any bubble machine. Like a turbo bubble yeah, machine. That was it was. Like, Fill my whole yard full like of foam, like a foam party bubble machine. No, all like just but, like these all but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was there's just bubbles everywhere in my yard, and I live on half an acre. That's a that's a fair volume of bubbles. Yeah. And this thing was just cranking. He's like pouring the, the bottles in as fast as they would feeding gallon jugs into this <laughs> yeah. hog. Yeah. Uh, that's but. the other thing about Aaron. He doesn't just show up with the device. He also shows up with forty five gallons of so, bubbles soaps, to go. Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. He's a. And just to put a little cherry on top, I have a hundred boxes of fireworks too. We're gonna bring. Just because. I like this guy. Yeah, oh yeah. Him, but I, but I think I like this guy. Oh, I almost got kicked off of my street. I almost got kicked out of the, awesome. the ward because of the fireworks show that we did in yeah. in my the cul-de-sac of fire. The cul-de-sac. They, there isn't more of they a true. nearly revolted. It was, we had some help. I had some help at my house this year. Guy came, this guy that sold all the land where we built our houses. He's the lone the lone old house in the in the whole area and he came storming over with his camera phone out and just losing his whole damn mind I ended up knocking on my door the next day and with a case of beer he's like I was an asshole last night I was like yeah well every neighbor in this neighborhood wanted to beat your ass last night but yeah it was like all the cul-de-sac kids everything and he shut it down and he didn't shut it down but he came over there and tried oh man <laughs> if there was ever a fireworks show for a neighbor to actually get mad at it was that it was that our we show had, it, in fairness yeah in fairness it was an hour and 20 minutes of like commercial of grade fireworks enormous and, aerial yeah, we no, no breaks we were, we were we were just shooting off you know some nice mortars yeah six inch mortars but just blowing them off one, you know two three at a time we had enough was, of nuts. the boxes I of wish him happy for the job. fireworks that were <laughs> no. this big and we were lighting them off two at a time two at a time for an hour for an hour straight let's go, let's go. and then <laughs> there was 80 the there was 80 of them wired together to these digital controllers that were remotely operated for the finale 80 who the hell let's go dude it was it was there was a wild. point during the finale where i'm like i'm going to jail tonight yeah this is, like, this no is way. it yeah. on their way yeah. on their school. way this is nuts people came to the party came to the the cult of sack of fire and they found it because they saw the fireworks they just drove to the fireworks they didn't even put it in their it went GP. On for that long <laughs> yeah. my kids so my see. kids were like we've never seen fireworks like that before you may never yeah, again, again. <laughs> me neither true. true me neither oh man some of those mortars that were going off were like shaking my fillings out just like a boom right there yeah. we were way too awesome. close oh absolutely <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> we were also trying to light them off as fast as we could because the garage is full <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a light of people. You had a lighter. Eric, he had a lighter. We all had a lighters, and Real we were like just four guys with lighters out there. There was oh, there, there was ten. There was ten of us. Hell yeah! Just a line of people <laughs> and there going. Was out plenty fast. for everybody to yeah. do. And there wasn't like oh no no wait that's a no no. It was just like yeah go go get it. Yeah. One of the fireworks, one of the boxes ran for three minutes, like just one mortar going, box. Going. Yeah, it's still going. You remember me yelling oh, yeah. that? It's still, still going. going. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Uh, oh yeah, my God. yeah. Because he does firework tents, he gets he has paid tents. in kind sometimes oh. with fireworks. Okay. I would like to know, like, just for fun, what is cost no. on what he brought versus what it retailed for? Because no. I'm saying there was at le- retail ten, ten, fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. Oh, easy? it's easy to blow. You can blow easy? a couple grand up yeah. in fire. I mean, if you go to one of those stands, you can spend a couple grand easy, fast, quick, fast. Yeah. yeah, and these were like the boxes that were like a sixty dollar box, like the big. Oh yeah, this is just low one, jack. Yeah, one firework. I think he told me these are like eighty bucks a piece. I'm sure. But what's the actual cost on it? Because I know the markup on fireworks is like Bananas. I have no idea. Ridiculous. It's, it's, yeah, I know it's insane. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but I bet we had at least ten thousand yeah. dollars retail. Oh, at least. At, oh, yeah. least. at least. Oh yeah. Ten thousand dollars in retail fireworks. I don't, I think would probably scare us. How much that isn't. Yeah. 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 You're probably right on that. Isn't. Right. Yeah. It was bananas. <laughs> I've, uh, <laughs> I talked to someone this morning. I was getting a uh, picking plums off of their tree. You know me, the night scaper. <laughs> I just had my bag. Plums. He's not and they're like, "Are plums. you? Are you Rob Adams?" And I'm all, "No." I'm all, 
maybe. <laughs> and they're like, we really enjoyed your fireworks. And it was like way over on the other side of the neighborhood. <laughs> you're trickling around yeah. the neighborhood. Oh, uh, the Watts's in the ward. They're like, you're Rob Adams. You had the fireworks show, huh? Maybe. The fireworks. <laughs> She's asking. Why you're asking. Who's asking? Uh, can I have some more plums? Yeah. Then yes. You're welcome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of plums, I can feel those fireworks down in my plums. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Who invited this kid from Stockton talking about his plums? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, it was a cool show, though. Probably never do that again. Till Ta- next year. Yeah. I was sweeping. Was I was out sweeping. There was my neighbors came out. We all worked for about four hours. Oh my god, the the, par, the, the paper mess is insane. It's crazy. Just what, it took us an, a solid hour and a half just to get to move the, the boxes. boxes out of the road. It was a lot of fireworks. <laughs> <It was> a <laughs> lot. Yes. I don't know that there's a private show that would no compare to that. Yeah. Yeah, that was at least in sheer volume. I could not believe it. There was a couple cul-de-sacs out, out towards me where you could tell the whole cul-de-sac threw down. Several, pitched seven, in. Five or six, seven houses threw down four or five hundred bucks a piece, and they were... They were rocking? Yeah, that one around the corner from just a little uh, west of mine, that right as you pull in. On oh, the yeah. Right there. They were going. That's they were cool. Going, they were going in. I'm saying he... Did he bring them on a trailer, or was it multiple truck trips? Two vans. Two vans. Two vans and a truck. Two vans full of fireworks. Yeah. They were full. Yeah. <laughs> and a truck. He kept coming. He's like, I just got a little bit more. I'll be over. And I'm like, my garage is full. Like, I can't park my car in the garage. <laughs> I'll be right back. And then I spent the whole day beforehand, uh, the 3rd of July, cutting the tops off of all of the boxes so that there wouldn't be as much of a paper mess. Like, I took off all of the... Oh, over the shell. Yeah, over covered. the shells. Okay. I uncovered okay, it, and I got the, all the fuses out ready to rock. Like, there was no waiting. Like, it was straight boom, boom, boom. An hour and a half. An hour and a half. These fired off. Two at a time. Yeah. So uh, Saturday, we lit the fireworks. You saw my neighbor run out and get mad. Did I tell you that what I did the next night? So the actual, the 24th. Uh-huh. Um, the neighbor that was next to me, they also were mad at me, but they had all their kids out in the driveway. And so I took over just those uh, flame, the Roman candles. I'm like, you guys want to light these? And they're like, yeah, that sounds great. And then I took over like another box. Next thing I know, I had like <laughs> a whole pile over there. And they were lighting them. I don't have to clean it up. You guys are lighting them. Yeah, that's and you. and that's the cool. neighbor came out that's all you. mad, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't know where, I don't yeah, know. It's these guys, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. We, uh, I wonder. We uh, had some little kids came knocking our door, making a YouTube video for uh, like what you can, you know. They had like three items, and they were trading them around for for things at different doors. Uh, we sent them out with uh, two packs of Roman candles and I think some bottle rockets. These kids were thrilled we're not of yeah. age to be <laughs> yeah that was to get traded i'm just gonna say we're right not, now yeah, we're not, not trading yeah, yeah. we didn't get these from this house okay. yeah. Yeah, that's what, you know everybody's there we're like let's give them some fireworks i was like they're nine yeah but okay perfect but okay you guys need a lighter yeah, a lighter. <laughs> lighter here you go oh man terrible uh-huh. and just don't stand too close when you point these at each other all right <laughs> i think we ended up with uh what we get a sorry travel sorry that's what we had traded for our uh our fireworks. There I'm you go. Sorry. Missing <laughs> one yellow piece. <laughs> <laughs> worth it. <laughs> worth it. <laughs> Big worth it. Oh, man. That's good stuff. That's awesome. So, so the neighbor next to you was upset? The neighbor across the street. He's making friends in the neighborhood. Yeah. Rapidly. And, and the neighbor that was just to the south of me, they both were mad. Yeah. The ones that we did, the fireworks. The ones down to the south that let us go in front of their house? Yeah. So um, his daughter was home. And I knocked on the door and I was like, hey, can we light these fireworks in front of your house? And she's like, yeah, that's fine. Then he texted me. I can show you the video. And the fireworks had relit. They had caught on fire during the night. They, I didn't, we didn't douse them well enough. And he's like, what's going on with this, Rob? And I'm like, oh, I thought I, we, we went them down with your hose. Like, we totally did it. And he's Puts just it like. Off on his hose. Yeah. Yeah, it's your hose's <laughs> well, fault. Your your hose. I mean, shit. I don't know what to tell you. He was pretty mad. He's like, well, we weren't home and she couldn't give you permission at night. I wanted to say, well, I don't, I don't need your permission to use the street. I, I live in Riverton too. I could use the street yeah, anywhere I want. Absolutely. I just was being nice to knock, but I didn't say that. I, I bit my tongue and I'm like, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. I almost, I apologize. Then the next night when they were out there lighting the fireworks, I was taking them over there and they had a wonderful time. So, cha-ching. Yes. Went. Good. Yeah. Yep. Although the, the guy that came out and said like, no, he might have had a legitimate point. Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. I, we I stopped. Have, I would imagine his backyard was absolutely covered. Yeah. Okay. And we, that's why we moved. I totally was like, okay, great. 
great. <coughs> he had uh, was, was he nice? Of- reminiscing from the for- the mess that was on the fourth. Oh, fourth. Yeah. Yeah. He thought it was sure. coming again. He thought, oh, oh, we're back. Yeah. Yep. We're the, back. And he was out there. He was like, I'm like, still the cleaning first stuff firework. out of my backyard. He was out there. <laughs> nah. I'm still cleaning stuff out of my yard. His so. gutters are full of it forever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. For sure. I swept that driveway. That was a big, the biggest sweep. It was his driveway in his yard. I was out there just on my hands and knees picking up little God. bits and pieces. Because I'm a good neighbor. I don't want to upset him, but man, he was mad. Tony. Tony. Has he been hey. a problem before, though? No. 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 Just been. You should always go and talk to him. Matt, we're good. He's just been generally kind of a. All my neighbors on my street are, are friendly enough, but we're not friendly. Yeah. Right? I mean, none of them come swimming in my pool. Sure. None of them come over way. to hang out. It's and That's cool. I'm yeah, okay with that. that. Like, yeah, you yeah. stay over there. I'll stay over here. Because. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to upset you in some way, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Most of them are into the main dogma here in the state, so I'm not. I'm outside their lifestyle, you know, so it's okay. I respect them. They're all good folks. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. But I would upset them if they yes. came over. Yeah, and the more that they don't come over, the better neighbors they're, they're going to be. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. So, there we go. Isn't that interesting? Because, like, if, if we were in Wisconsin, right, that yeah. would – you would – you know All what? of them would be at your pool every yeah. every Sunday. Yeah. The dynamic is definitely definitely yeah. different when you plug. It's true. Plug something like that in a neighborhood that we're all you know plugged into. I guess you'd say we're the black sheep of the neighborhood. But when shit goes down, you know where they're coming. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, it, it's true. When I grew up in Texas, all of us we would do uh, street barbecues during the summer, like twice or three times during the the summer, where we'd shut the street down, and there are people with nice cars would have their cars out there, and the guys with the motorcycles have their motorcycles out. And, it was kind of like a car show, motorcycle show, barbecue, people. And I didn't ever go up and think, oh, I wonder what's in this. I just was like, this is great food. Like, I had a wonderful time. It's just, I think, I don't know if we're in Utah, if we're, is it Utah or is it nationwide? We've become so isolated over the past two years. I honestly think it's a Utah thing. Because yeah. I'm not that far removed from traveling around. Yeah. And I'm telling you, like, it was never a question. And same thing in Texas. You know, but it was never a question. It was whose house are we all going to? Yeah. And it was, what are we doing this weekend? Right. It wasn't a, like there wasn't invites or you're invited or you're invited or something like that. It had nothing to do with it. It was whose house are we all yeah. going to this weekend? Yeah. You know, when I was back in Ohio uh, for, my, for the Thanks He Was Heroes golf tournament, it was a lot that. There's just a yeah. lot of everybody coming over. And I was just like, who, was, who are these people? Oh, that's, that's Barbara and John. They live down the street around the corner. And they're there. That's it. That's how they know them. There's yeah. no other extra. Yeah. We don't go to church with them. None of that. It was just, yeah. And they know each one of their neighbors. Because cool. I don't know of anybody here that knows or is friends with their neighbors. Yeah. I know all my neighbors, but I'm not friends, friends with them. Yeah. I'm friendly. Friendly. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's interesting. I wonder why, wonder why this most charitable state is that way. Hmm. I don't know. I'm friends with some of my neighbors. Yeah, you are. Alec. That's a good guy to have a friend as a friend. Yeah, my one neighbor, they can never hate me. So they were, my house had finished building. They had just finished building theirs. Dug their pool. Pool house was in. They're on vacation, and I'm kind of like smelling smoke. I'm like, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Who's having a fire in this neighborhood? Well, let's start to see their little pool house start to make some clouds of smoke. So I jump their fence, run over there. Their pool house is on fire. Oh no! Brand new house, brand new, brand new. I mean, what? They're, they're, they haven't even moved in. It's that new. Dang. They have all their ring cameras up. I'm over there turning the disconnect off, turning the gas off to the heater, you know, taking their hose. What happened is the guys that built the pool house didn't put a vent in and had started the pool equipment, so it essentially spontaneously combusted. Oh, what? But, yeah, they're on their ring cameras, and she comes on. She's actually in title. Uh, she works in a title company. Oh. And she's like, what's going on? I was like, she put your pool house off. Your pool house on fire. It's no big deal. You know, we got this. So uh, yeah, the fire department shows up and do do whatever they do, and they they have been great neighbors to me. <laughs> <laughs> they have been good neighbors. Sure way to great. start that off. They uh, have been great neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, they should be. Put yeah, their house save up. their house. That's yeah, awesome. Nice. I have a neighbor that has park lighting in his backyard, and he gets out there around ten o'clock, turns on the lights. These park lights, huge. Sweet. And he <laughs> gets on his riding mower. Starts he start about ten. He's out there mowing. The, is it a heat yeah, thing? In the, yeah, it's a heat yeah, thing for him. Definitely. But I have been tempted to get my pellet gun. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm going to just give him one. Put him down. Just, yeah. just one. No, just, just, a, just one. Just a stinger, you know, yeah, on the neck. 
Yeah. <laughs> Would that make me a bad person when I go to hell? You, BB gun, overall. yes. Airsoft gun, no. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> a paint, a paintball gun. Yeah, he's got paintball like a big gun, green you're fine. paint. Blah. One paintball, just one. That's all it would take. Just a shot across the bow. Yeah. <laughs> Think about those paintballs. You can see them coming. Like, was that a bee? Like, it's slow enough. Like, you would, you would know which direction it yeah. came from. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you can see, you can see where that came from. That's terrible. <laughs> that we're even considering. He's called the police on us a couple times. So. Turn about's fair play. I feel like I feel pretty good about it. Feel yeah. pretty good about that. Yeah. If you're the cop calling a neighborhood on dumb stuff, like just just shoot me a text. Like you know what I mean? Don't call. You gotta call the cops. You should throw one of the wasp nests you told us about. There you go. So, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. On that bad boy. Oh man, that would ruin them. <laughs> yeah. That would ruin them. I had the police called on me in my neighborhood because uh, my neighborhood is about it's probably about 20 years old, I'd say. So all the trees that they put in, all the flowering pears and the stuff that was part of the the build are now big enough that they're they're encroaching upon the sidewalk. And I walk about three miles every day with my dogs every morning. I walk with my dogs. Um, winter, summer, doesn't matter. I'll walk them in the rain. They need it. And so I was getting really bugged by all the branches being on the sidewalk. And so I started taking my shears. And I would go and I would trim the trees just as I'd walk just past. Just one I'd, a day? Just I'd just grab a little piece, grab a little piece. And, you know, just kind of clearing my tunnel the way that it went. And uh, I named myself. I had a superhero name called the Nightscaper. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Like a landscaper, but <laughs> after six yeah, months of rock yeah. yeah. the yeah. nightscaper, the nightscaper, and so I eventually the police get called. Of course, they someone got me on their camera, and uh, they knock on the door, and they're like, "Mr. Adams, have you been uh, trimming your neighbor's trees?" <laughs> You're like, "Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, yes." I just said, "Yes," like quick, "Yes, I have." And uh, she said, "Well, can you show me where you've done it?" And I showed her, and she's like, "Wow, that's actually looks really good." <laughs> 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 uh, and I told her my nickname. She thought that was hilarious. This officer, and she's like, "Well, you got to quit doing that." And I'm like, "Okay, I'll quit doing it." So, they were even if it's over the sidewalk, yeah. Huh. Wow. So I've got to be really careful now that I do it. Oh man, <laughs> I only do it you on trash day. Here's what I've learned: on trash day, I'll trim it and I'll throw it in their garbage. I think what was making them mad is that I was trimming it, and just leaving it on the sidewalk. Well, I mean, oh. They were trimming it. It should have been like a light bulb going on. Like if I see one of my neighbors, like. Like trimming my shrub my, trimming out there. Um, that's a that's, that's a, a sign that you. That's a sign that I need to get my ass out there and trim yeah. my trees. Right, right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but no, they didn't take it that they way. They didn't Call appreciate the police. Yeah, they said no. Nope. Riverton City came out and visited with me, okay. but it was awesome. Don't I worry. thought I was getting called for like getting in my hot tub naked or something the like old that. Nightscaper is on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is also his, his nickname in the hot tub. <laughs> the Nightscaper. That's his poor yeah. name. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice it. Game, Fully right? tatted. <laughs> Watch for me. Uh, but yeah. And so one of the neighbors actually came and they trimmed my trees. And my trees don't need trim it. I just want you to know. <laughs> they said that. <laughs> yeah. And so I think they came down. I think he was just doing some revenge scaping. Revenge scaping. Now we're moving. Now, we're, now the term is evolving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he trimmed my trees and left the branches on the ground. I know who it was. And I want to go to church just one time and just be like, I know who you are. I saw you I out there. Your dreams. Yeah. I, yeah, I know who did it. Should. Yeah, life in suburbia, baby. It's an adventure. Never a dull moment. Yeah. You could just walk in and put a pair of clippers on his lap. Yeah, some shears. <laughs> These are for you. Yeah. If you're gonna do it, do it right. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, the roses need tending. Hurry yeah. Up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll do the roses can next. You, can I get you in the backyard? <laughs> yeah, we got big projects. <laughs> Man. Good times in suburbia. Mm. I've never had that issue out there. In Stockton? Out there in the God's country. They don't have sidewalks out there yet, There's do no they? Sidewalks. Yeah. There you go. Did I you would... turn off the, the paved road to get to your house? No. No. No? It, it's okay. all it's all concrete. I just wanted to gauge Much how hot. far out you actually were. No, it was good. He's got a great spot. Like there's deer and the antelope and bears. If you take it down with your bare hands, you can take it home. Yeah. Well, it's just in my yard. It's mine. Yeah. You Is that an actual rule? You don't, need do a li- you don't need a license if you can get it in your own yard. <laughs> you just have to use a rimfire rifle. Can't be a center fire. What does that mean? What's rimfire? 22. 22. Rimfire, yeah. Or a shotgun with buckshot. Or a compound bow. Or a bow. Yeah. I am. It doesn't count unless you take it down with your hands and a knife, though. Yeah, that's true. Now you, you see that episode you of Alone. spear it. They do bed, like, right off my deck, so I... If I like just turn jump. my spotlights on, I can see him down there. You could jump on him. Just jump, but it's over. a pretty just... far drop. But 
Well, the momentum. Yeah, that's going to help you, you, you know. Could. You could bring the people's elbow do down. Boom. Oh, one and done. Yeah. It's one and done. Yeah. Just saying. Great ideas. Put a salt lick down there. Yeah. We have dinner. I don't know if I want to eat those. No? <laughs> no. Actually, antelope is not all that great. They're not great. antelope. There's deer. Oh. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have antelope. Muleys. We have some elk, though, in the end of the neighborhood. Oh, those can those go. Those cool. I've never those had one of those in my yard. But. I do dig elk. They make the best chili. Oh, yeah. yeah elk. Good. Like ground elk. Yeah. So good. Elk is delightful. Yep. We do have a caught a rattlesnake in my yard. Did you cook that up? You can't talk about it. Oh. The first rule about rattlesnakes in Stockton right. is we don't talk about it's rattlesnakes. It's illegal to kill rattlesnakes. Is Seriously? That right? Is it? Oh, that's a it dumb is. law. Wow. That's on site for me. Yeah. I, yeah. I, that's a law that's not yeah. getting... Self-defense. I'm not going to hunt it by any stretch. Yeah, it was but in if my it's, yard where my kids play. Yeah, that's yeah. going down. Your head's coming off. I'd yeah. some crying yeah, so, yeah, I'm that's a immediately. Belt for that's, a sh- that's a round mouth shovel to the head real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Which was the name of my first band in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Round mouth shovel to the head. <laughs> it was a ska band. <laughs> Not true. I used to listen to your mixtapes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Mama don't love me anymore. That was my best album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the stuff I think about when I'm alone. Dude, the toads. So you know Rush Lake. Yeah. It was pretty full this year. It was. And there was tons of tadpoles. And then they turned into frogs. And then about a week and a half ago, the the road into my neighborhood was just littered with hundreds of thousands of frogs. What? Like, the road was moving with frogs. Crazy. Wow. The news wanted to do, like, a story on it. But now, I mean, nobody gave a shit. So they all ran over and they're all dead. Yeah, to dry it out. Dude, it was bananas. Wow. I was riding my motorcycle through there like, what in the hell? Like Across toads? You rode your bike across dude, toads? Just across toads. It's got to be some sort of omen. It was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's nuts. like the end of the world kind of stuff. <laughs> Ask the Egyptians about that. Like, <sighs> Or if you're from Louisiana, we dinner. We eat. They were little, though. <laughs> yeah. They're just little yeah. guys. So it takes, it it takes a lot of work. A lot of legs. To get some meat off of that. Yeah. Just those little... little. <laughs> Can you only eat the legs on a frog? Yeah. 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 Legs. That's all there's. Yeah, yeah the rest is guts. Guts. The rest is some yeah, mucus. And Grossness. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Frogs. And it did have a certain smell right in through there. You could, it was swampy. Ugh. That's the thing about riding a motorcycle. You get an extra level of appreciation. If you drive through in your car, you got the air conditioner on. It smells like pine. You yeah. know what I mean? Or that new, new car, car smell. Yeah, when we, were, <laughs> when we were riding through up near Lake Highway and you'd run across the roadkill and you just get that, that yeah. punch to the nose. Yeah. Like, That's some steady, steamy death over there. Yeah. That is disgusting. I don't know if you know this, but they're on I-15 here. There's a bacon factory. Dailies. Yeah, dailies. 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 Yeah. My favorite part about the ride coming down here. I take the highway just for that. <laughs> Oh. It's, it's interesting that you ride p- past her sometimes and it does smell amazing, and then other times you're like, stink. what? Like burnt oh, asshole. Yeah. 33rd they, South yeah. stink. Yeah. Sometimes, it's, yeah. sometimes we're cooking bacon, other times I don't know we're cooking. They're cleaning yeah. the grills or something. They're, something. It's terrible. It's like Dannon. Oh, man. Dude, that's brutal. Stanky. Stanky. Have you ever been out there? They have like these vats where they have to release the gas off of them periodically. Mountain View 90th? Yeah. Oh, and freaks. there's a, like 10 o'clock at night, it's just like, poof, like oh, a gas hot... Man yogurt gas <laughs> yeah. it stinks it stinks so bad yeah was that you no it was dead it was I can taste it I, I worked out there you can it's, it's, dude, it's it is, brutal it is dang hot dang summer stinky. day did you see them building their houses they're building houses out there south of the the landfill big beautiful like $800,000 easy homes and south of the landfill is something because the lake is north of the landfill, and so the wind kind of travels Ooh. down that west, that on the west end of the valley, the wind travels south almost all the time. And it's it reeks. That landfill has been getting filled for 25 years, as long as I've been here in Utah. Weird. It, Weird. They're building these houses, like, that's kind next of, door. That's how I feel about the Utah, the houses on Utah Lake. Like, some of those ones that are right there on the water, it's like, this is a nice house, but... Yeah, come here in this, June with the bugs. The bugs will carry this house away in yeah. June. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've showed houses out there where the bugs, I don't know what it is about them being on the sidewalk, but they're all lined up on the sidewalks. They're waiting. Yeah, they're just columns of these black bugs, and you're there's nowhere else to walk except for on the lawn or the street, and you have to you have to penetrate the curtain of bugs oh, to get man. into the house. If you had a bug light out there, you'd have to be like just scraping it off nonstop. It is kill pile would be huge. Yeah, just terrible, terrible. No, right mm. there by the golf course. You know where the golf course is? Right out there mm. on right on the <clears throat> that side of the lake. Mm -hmm. Great for riding. Great for riding. Yeah, until it's time to clean it. Yeah, you remember when we, we drove through a, a, yeah, yeah. a parcel of bugs and you didn't have a windshield nope. or a face mask. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was awesome. That's a treat. I was yeah. covered. Yeah. All the way through. Yeah. Yeah. My, my windshield was like clear on Bamalama and then shoo, not clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Oh, uh, man. But uh, I can't imagine running over frogs in the it was volume. Cool. It, was a, it was a weird, yeah. surreal experience. Just. Was it slippery? Was it like what the hell? I, it had to be slick. I mean, I was like bracing myself, like God, what the, f what is gonna yeah. happen? You know, yeah. are they gonna carry me away? Yeah, yeah. I literally couldn't see the road, like it, it, it was moving. God, that's it's crazy. crazy. That's it's crazy. Wild. I've seen that with locusts before. For a pretty before. long stretch, you know those those curves, right? But yeah. my house, yeah. That whole stretch. Wow. Like, huh. I've seen it with locusts before out there, actually. Uh, south of Stockton, whatever that Rush Valley. Rush Valley. I've gone out there, and it's just like waves of bugs on yes. the road. We went out there in our pickup truck, and my dad and I, and my dog wouldn't get out of the truck. There were so many, so many locusts yep. on the ground, just like a carpet just rolling across, eating everything. Gross. It was crazy. They really do leave a wake of eating everything, right? Yeah, everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. There's, there's mm. crazy videos online. It's just tearing stuff apart. Crazy. Well. That's what happened to the Egyptians. Don't mess with Moses. Well, learn your lesson. Yeah. Biblical. Biblical. Don't mess with Moses. Yep. Also abandoned high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More that was your second band? Second band, yeah. Don't mess with Moses. Yeah. More of a punk rock. It was a phase that you went through, I think. Yeah. Okay, you know? Lots of flannel. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mess with Moses. Flannel. Studded belts. Yeah. <laughs> and chokers. Oh. Don't forget those. Yeah. Lots of those. How could you forget those? You know, can't. Lisa Tanlight. <laughs> Still there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk. Yeah, absolutely. Is, this, is, this, is there like a point at the, in this rambling conversation where we get to like, and on that note, and make, on that note, make good Rob's choices. Done, and we're ready to end this. <laughs> what time is it? How long have we been going? Nine o'clock. <laughs> That's awesome. Just like that, we killed two hours. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, yeah. You want to do a sign-off? Yeah. All right, let's see what you got. All right, thanks for tuning in. If you uh, have further questions and would like to know more, you can check us out on uh, American Masterminds. Uh, check out our, our uh, motorcycle networking group. You can check out our podcast. And you can check out also the, all the charitable efforts that we're making in the community to make this world a better place. Thank you for tuning in, and we will talk to you soon. Take care. Hell, yeah. Yow!